Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to Nick Tremulous, lead singer of the new band Candy Gold. It features several familiar faces for rock fans, including longtime Cheap Trick drummer Bonnie Carlos. Stick around! So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. The show is brought to you today by Audible. Audible is offering Mr. Media listeners a free audiobook download and a 14-day trial offer to give you a chance to check out their very cool service. I love listening to books on tape. If you've never tried it before, actors or sometimes the authors themselves read to you. It's great for the commute, the beach, or even unwinding before bed. You can choose a free audiobook from Audible's enormous library of titles, including today's top rock and roll related bestsellers such as Kiss and Make Up by Gene Simmons, The Man Called Cash by Steve Turner, or even one of my most recent favorites, Keith Richards' Life. You can even download Will Eisner, A Spirited Life, the biography of the comic book and graphic novel legend, which I wrote and will read to you personally. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of true rock and roll fans who have Paul Simon in permanent rotation alongside Richard Hell and the Voidoids in the new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Hey, we're from Chicago, where America eats its young. Rick Rizzo over there. John Stewart right there. Bunny Carlos right there. Mark Greenberg over there. I'm Nick. Gold had me at Bun E. Carlos. If this band is intriguing enough for the drummer of Cheap Trick to take a flyer on, who am I not to be curious? The band, which includes John Sturratt of Wilco, Rick Rizzo of 11th Dream Day, and my guest, Nick Tremulous, made its debut at South by Southwest in Austin this past March. Its self-titled debut EP, Candy Gold, is now available for download on iTunes and Amazon. Now, it's not uncommon for a new band to pick an old song to cover and make it their own. Candy Gold went with a curious choice, Paul Simon's infectious Boy in the Bubble. I'm very curious to know the thought process behind that. Nick Tremulous, welcome to Mr. Media. How's it going, Bob? Going good. Glad to have you here. So, uh, Nick, tell me, uh, you don't hear a lot of Paul Simon covers these days. Is this the first step in a reappraisal and renewed appreciation for Ryman Simon, or is there something else going on here? Well, the, <clears throat> for me, there's really something else going on a little bit. Um, Bunny Carlos's drum beat to Hello Kitties is a certain kind of beat that no drummer can do but Bunny. Mm-hmm. And the first time I heard that beat, I thought, and I'm more of a blues musician. I've played a lot in that sort of hound dog Taylor style of blues. I thought, I've got to do something with that beat with Bunny. And <clears throat> I always loved that song off Paul Simon's Graceland record, and I always heard it that way, sort of in my head with Bunny drumming on it and doing it a bit more aggressive as opposed to uh, Paul's version which is kind of a, which is kind of um, removed by the television screen almost. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to get in the jungle with the music and use Bunny's jungle beat with it and Bunny 
understood what I was talking about, so we went for it. You know? Have you heard other covers of that song? I, for the life of me, I can't think you know, of anyone. The funniest thing is um, we had recorded it a while back, and then about six months after we'd done it, Peter Gabriel did a version just with piano and cello, I believe, and it's a very dour version of it. So I thought, <laughs> this is great. We're doing the exact opposite of, of everything, you know. It's like that one more version of this song that that's completely different from the other two, which is nice. It's hard to imagine a dour version of that song. I mean, it. Oh, you should you should hear it. It's very dark. Yeah, I, I'll pass. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll stick to the Peter Gabriel that I know and like, and uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to make the. Uh, that's going to make the cut. So uh, when and if uh, uh, Candy Gold plays uh, more live gigs, uh, mm -hmm. are there more covers uh, on, on, the, on the song list? Well, that, that's it. We kind, of, uh, I do, we kind of just, before we started rehearsing, put together a song list of songs that we liked as kids and, and songs that sort of endured for us. And consequently, the set list ranges from about 1960, 67. But we do the Leaves version of Hey Joe. Uh, I think the latest tune that we do would be brontosaurus by we do talk talk by the music of our favorite singles you know before we were buying albums basically cool. so it's a lot of fun to play and it's a very aggressive set and we have a ball and, so it. tell me about this lineup how does this group of guys come to be a band well it, it's it's kind of a a, a long sort of strange period it, it started with myself and rick rizzo um playing on an acoustic show together where we were each doing solo shows and we decided uh, you know that we did one tune together we decided right beforehand we did John Cale's Amsterdam and I played banjo and he played acoustic guitar on it and when we soloed together it was like we would played together for a long time and I said you know we really should maybe get together sometime and do a band or something and about a week later I got a call from John Sinclair the free John Sinclair guy from John Lennon and all that and the leader of the White Panthers, and who was the manager of the MC5. He's also a, a DJ and a poet. And he called me up and said, and I had done Dobro stuff behind him, just in his poetry, he'd called me once, and we were put together by a friend. He said, listen, I, I got a job opening for the MC5 tomorrow night. Can you put together a band really quick? And so I called Rick on the phone, and I said, you remember how I said we should play together sometime in a band or something? And he goes, yeah. And, and I said, want to play tomorrow night? And that's what we did. We opened with a percussionist on two electric guitars. And, and then about a year later, we started sitting down and maybe trying to write stuff. And that became real easy. And then basically, I just called up Bunny, who I played with on a couple shows, and John, who I'd known for a long time, and said, uh, you want to form a band? Hear some songs. See what you think. And they all said yes. So that was it. It was very quick and very fast, including the recording. It just all went like lightning, kind of made itself, which is now, nice. Now, is this, do the guys consider this kind of a side gig to their other things that they're known for, or is this the, the thing right, right now? This is, this is a side gig okay. for all of us. Um, okay. I'm finishing a record right now with my band. Um, Wilco's just putting the finishing touches on their next record. Um, um, Rick Rizzo's out with uh, 11th Dream Day as well right now. His his record was released a month before ours. And um, Bun is just taking a sabbatical right now from live playing with, with Cheap Trick, but he isn't taking, he never takes a sabbatical from drumming. In fact, he drums every day. You know, he's that type of well, musician. That, I mean, uh, Cheap Trick, of course. Uh, I mean, I, I remember being in college <clears throat> a long time ago when they were still fairly new on the scene and i mean they've always been known mm -hmm. as that band that plays almost every day you knew they were out playing somewhere so you know the is this oh, the first yeah. time that he's played in an, or, um, in an organized way with a different group of guys he did a thing he did a thing a couple of years ago called tinted windows with um mm -hmm. one of the members of james ia uh was one of the members and believe it or not i think taylor hansen was the singer and they made a, a quick record together and, and uh, went out and toured it a little bit. So he's done it before. He played with John Lennon, too, on, uh, on uh, which song? I can't even remember. I'm Losing oh, You, I, I believe. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he and Rick got, uh, did a recording session before John had passed. Well, when, we, when we started talking, you mentioned uh, for Boy in the Bubble that you, you, you imagined it with, with Bun, Bunny playing uh, a certain sound. What does, uh, what does a guy like that bring to the group that 
Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the great thing about being able to do this, for, for one thing, is to, one, be in what is slightly a cover band, as none of us have had the chance to be in that. We've always had to make albums. And the other thing is just, you know, people's experience bring a lot of things. Bunny's probably had the most experience of all of us in terms of being in a band, a long-time band, in terms of making set lists that work and set lists that don't, and pacing a set and pacing yourself. So it's just great to be around him because you're, you're constantly learning from him. Just, just really practical stuff. And you know. uh, how did you guys settle on the name of the band, Candy Gold? I mean, you said as we were, before we came on that, you know, it's basically a stripper name. But it, I mean, was that was that actually it? Well, well, initially, um, I wanted it to be the Vandalettes um, when we were talking about that, which was kind of a cool name. And then I found a, a group of like thirteen-year-old girls that had a MySpace site called the Vandalettes. They had very little hits on it. And I thought, well, that's not going to be a problem. I mean, you know, I can take this name. And then I thought, do I really want to steal a name from 13-year-old girls, you know? So I let them have it. Um, the The artist that painted the covers fairly is extremely well known here in Chicago. His name is Wesley Kimler. And Wesley did my album cover for the Nicholas Tremulous Orchestra beforehand, which we called Pinky. He has a tendency to have a rather perverse uh, sense of humor. And so he started calling me Sugar Pink on the phone, thinking it would bother me, you know? And so I made up a name for him, and that was Candy Gold, his stripper <laughs> name. And when it came time to name the band, I thought, well, that's a pretty big band name, too, so we just Not used bad. it. And uh, so the band yeah. uh, debuted at South by Southwest. How did that go? Yeah. It went great. Uh, couldn't have been better. And it was nice, you know, I've played South by Southwest a bunch of times. It was nice to be asked by them for a change as opposed to go through the usual rigmarole and and because of that we got we got treated really well and um, saw a lot of great musicians came to our show and stuff and that's really what the fun thing about South by Southwest is we're usually always working on the same days and never get to see one another so it's kind of like you know seeing a bunch of guys you haven't seen in a bunch of years and stuff, and they come to see you, you go to see them. It's so nice. The, uh, the EP, which is, I'll repeat, is uh, also called Candy Gold. It's out. People can get it on yeah. uh, Amazon. They can get it on uh, iTunes. Um, yeah. 10-inch vinyl. 10-inch vinyl with a download card. So, so what's yeah. Uh, yeah. what's the ambitions for the band? You, you, you got together on kind of a lark. You've now done an EP. Uh, you played South by Southwest. Where could or where will it go? Well, we want to, we want to do a, a few more gigs that fit within our schedules right now. So we'll do some more work up until the fall. A few choice gigs, maybe a f couple fly-in situations. And uh, we've been taping shows. So, uh, in fact, we did a five-camera shoot at our record release, and we're going to keep taping shows. And we're thinking about putting out a live album because it's a very live band, and uh, we already have a working title for it. So you want to tell us? You're not going to. Golden, golden golden moments. moments. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, folks, listen. Uh, you can download or order uh, Candy Gold's uh, debut EP, uh, also mm -hmm. titled Candy Gold, uh, right now at a great price at MrMedia.com. It's also available. Great. It'll make it available, and it's also available on iTunes and uh, Amazon. Uh, there's also a website, which is candygold.com. It's C-A-N-D-Y-G-O-L-D-E.com. Make sure you have mm -hmm. the E. Uh, have you guys set up uh, uh, Twitter or Facebook, any of that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. We've got Facebook and all that. We Our, our publicist, Cheryl, makes sure that we're connected Excellent. every which way. Excellent. Well, uh, Nick, uh, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today, and uh, good luck with the band. Well, thanks a lot. It's been fun. And, uh, folks... Uh, for more original interviews with America's favorite singers and musicians, you can surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Uh, you can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of Chicago. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you giving up a piece of your day and spending.